feel like I'm slowly getting on top of the posting, so oh, I've got a couple of hours to spare, and I thought, I might as well make a new vlog. So today, I am talking about how to start a clothing company, and what the biggest secret is. Uh, roll the intro. Grew up fast, then blew up fast. Money falling out my pockets, I got too much cash. Can't so, I've got this question a lot lately, um, especially in the past month, month and a half. My friends and I are gonna start a clothing company. What do I need to do? And I'll tell you what the secret to starting a clothing company is. This thing right here. The smartphone. We live in the information age, but we're starved of knowledge. I don't think people realize how powerful this thing in your pocket is. Do you know what I mean? It literally holds the answers to everything. Like, I'll give you an example. If, I, if it was me versus you, I go grab 20 of the smartest people you know. You're like, sweet. I'll grab my mom, my dad, the kid who was the best at maths at school, the girl who got ducks, uh, my grandma's smart, my auntie's an accountant, they meet me down at the pub, I'll bring my phone, let's do trivia. And if I challenge you to trivia 10 times in a row, I'd pump you every time, do you know what I mean? I'd be the guy, I'd be sitting over there going, oh look, the guys listen to his mum and dad about business advice, they don't own a business. So, like, this should be your reference point every time. I know you're close, like, your family and your close mates mean well, but, but they're not smarter than this thing here. I generally mean that like we could be at trivia and um, Siri, what is the capital of Kazakhstan? Astana is the capital of Kazakhstan. The power lies like within this phone and I can't stress it enough. And it just sort of comes back to pure laziness. No, they want the answer laid out in front of them and sometimes I give them the answers but if you get more value in doing the research like I find guys like they might see a girl on the weekend, they'll spend an hour trying to figure out who she is on Instagram and they go, oh she was with Laura. Um, Laura was at Bondi Beach, hashtag Bondi Beach, and like, or a female would go, who's that, who's that girl that my boyfriend liked two years ago? They could spend two hours and they'll find it. It's the same game. It's literally the same game. So instead of you chasing girls on Instagram, you go, how can I build a business? How can I start a clothing company? You just spend that time instead of chasing girls, you spend it trying to develop yourself. And that's literally it. It all lies in here. But... Uh, for the vlog, I will break this down for you. One, come up with a name. If you look at a lot of brands across, I'll give you a couple of examples across New Zealand and Australia. Zane Robe, um, I Love Ugly, Huffa, The People Verse. On face value, when you see them names, they don't like, they seem a bit weird as well. Same as us, like YKTR. I reckon I get asked all the time, what does YKTR stand for? I'll be like, oh, you know the rules. And then they'll look at me going like, <laughs> shaking my head, shaking their head as like, they don't know what the rules are. Things like Nike, off face value, Nike sounds like a weird name, but I actually found out Nike, in Greek mythology, is the goddess of victory. So, that's a pretty cool name, but I think people get caught up on this a little bit too much. Had two guys come through my unbox going, hey, what name would you pick out of these three? We'll spend the last fortnight dwelling on it. I'm like, just pick any. Uh, the second thing you should do is make a logo or make a design. Our very, our very first design, I made in five minutes on the app called Font Candy. So all the brands in the world use Adobe Illustrator. It does take time to use. I've spent hours trying to learn it, but there's people that lo really love this stuff. So I've sort of outsourced that. So I'll design everything either on my phone or computer. Um, I'll email them and they turn it into the right format. And if you don't have a graphic designer, you can jump on a website called Fiverr.com. And the other one is Upwork where they got freelance workers. So what they do, so what you do is post a job on them websites and people come to you. And you can you can get designs for as little as five bucks, but if you want revisions, it costs more, and that's how they make their money like that. So those are two great websites that you can use if you don't have a graphic designer. If you don't have anything, it's pretty much all on there. Find a supplier. The way I found a supplier was Siri, Google screen printers near me. Okay, I found this on the web for screen printers near me. And that's basically it. We went to Parramatta Mall, it's custom tees. I go, can you make this design here on my phone? They go, email me and I'll print it on the t-shirt, come back in an hour. They printed it on three t-shirts, one for me and the boys. We started wearing them around. Um, people go, where can I get those? So we made 20, sold them to our friends and grew like that. So if you do eventually do go big and you want to find a supplier over in China, jump on the website called Alibaba. Alibaba is pretty much the marketplace of the world. It's the Asian equivalent of um, eBay. So you jump on there, manufacturers, suppliers, whatever, research, research, research. You gotta trial them, try and get some samples, and all this different stuff. And that's basically it. And then all you gotta do is try and market it and sell it. And I've done a few vlogs now while marketing, and hopefully that pushes into sales. 
A few things I would be careful of, scalability. I'd start small and grow big the way we've done it. I wouldn't change it for the world. We started with three t-shirts, just wearing them ourselves. We grew to 10 t-shirts. We grew to 20 t-shirts. We sold them to our friends. We made $2 profit, bought some more shirts, went again. Brought in another design, went again. And slowly moved like that. Like We've been taking this seriously for a year, but that process, I was doing that for eight, nine months before I go, all right, I want to go a bit bigger. I just didn't dive in. And I've had examples. I've had two people I know, or not personally know, but have come to me, gone, I want to go to China, all this, I've got 20K. They've come back to me in the last month, month and a half, going, like, I can't sell all my stuff. Like, what do I do? And I, I sort of pre-warned them, but they were like, I've got wholesalers. I've, all my friends are going to buy stuff. Like, trust me, it's going to be all right. And we go into the business with great optimism, but um, a lot of it will fail. And that's the scary part, and it's a, and it's a part that a lot of people don't talk about. So I'd start small and grow big from there. And people come through my inbox going, "Hey, me and my friends got money to spend. Throw us your support." I'm like, "How much money you got?" And they're like, 500 bucks." So 500 bucks is a great starting point, but you might be only be able to buy 10 t-shirts. But if you can't sell those 10 t-shirts, how you gonna sell maybe 500 t-shirts? Do you know what I mean? I get people coming through, um, go, "We got 3k to spend." Um, send us your supplier in China and I'm, and I'm like you know 3k is not even going to be enough money to get your clothes into the country let alone design and make them sample them and that that's a real shock to a lot of people because they don't understand they think it's just going to be so easy or it doesn't cost like a lot of money um, and that scares a lot of people off as well so I generally think start small if your local screen printer find the best uh, screen printer near you, trying to build a relationship with them. Hopefully they've got a graphic designer on board where they can take that part out of the job for you and build slowly from there. Like, there's no rush. Like, you don't, like, may feel like we've popped up overnight, but it just definitely hasn't felt like it's overnight. So, I generally encourage you not to rush things. I think because with the vlogs and that, it's given us awareness. So everyone wants to be wants to start their own brand or which is cool like or wants to be an entrepreneur it's got an easy entry cost similar to PT so PTs can do a six week course and after that they can train people and they go Instagram edit profile um, coach or nutritionist same as real estate real estate's a two week course people do it so they can go Instagram edit profile property mogul people invest in bitcoins now they go edit profile investor financial investor or stuff like that that's a similar thing with this clothing company people say it like it looks cool on instagram because you can say edit profile uh entrepreneur slash fashion designer but once you realize like if that's your whole business there designing getting people to wear your clothes is literally the top part of it like all this other stuff here that's that's where the, that's where the business is like these vlogs and that it can make packing and that look cool because i've got time lapses or I'm slow mo, but that's just videoing. That's just post post production editing. Like you throw Drake over the back, or J Cole, or anyone over the back of anything, you can make it look cool. I could drive from here to the shops, at high frame rate, play it back to you in slow mo with different angles and that, and I could make going to the grocery grocery shop look cool. Do you know what I mean? So don't be fooled by our even our vlogs where where a lot of it's really grindy stuff. And the thing with um, online businesses now, they don't stop. So once five o'clock comes around, I'm, I'm not locking the door, turning the sign around to close and walking home and doing nothing. Like, because you're online, people like to buy online late at night. So there's always stuff that's just piling on top of you, piling on top of you. Thing. And people are like, oh, you're so lucky you get to work from home. And like, I literally can take a day off whenever I want. But if I take, if I spend eight hours at the beach mucking around with the boys, that's eight hours of work, and then I've got to come home do, say, six hours of posting, and that combines up. So that's 14 hours of problems that you've got to put potentially put out. And the world keeps going. The world, once you're online, once your business is online, the world doesn't stop. It just keeps going around and around, and people jump on your website, and it, it's great. But like, I don't, I don't think people see that side of the business, and like, I could. I could show you me sitting at a laptop for eight hours trying to put out fires. That's the stuff you need to realise that comes with it as well. And I think like right at the start of the, oh, probably the first sort of six, seven months, 
months of it, people are like, oh, all you do is just sit at home. But like, I'm not just sitting at home just for the sake of sitting at home. So I've got to focus about trying to market um, the, the collection we've got now. I'm trying to design a new collection that's coming uh, three months from now. I'm trying to organize samples of the stuff that I want in the next collection. Just like you own people money all the time. So it's coming from all these different directions. Uh, you got trying to keep customers happy. You got people um, asking if they can exchange sizes or I've sent the wrong size out so I have to redo another one. So there's a lot of things that are going on and that's that designing part like on face value looks like the cool part but this is the actual business. And like the process of it is so easy. Do you know what I mean? I can be like, and like Corey's like, all you have to do is post t-shirts. That's not hard. But it's one of them things like you don't know until you're actually in it. It's sort of like footy. I could go to Corey. Oh, it's not hard to win a game. You just have to score more, more points than those guys over there. Oh, win a comp, easy. Like, just win more games than everyone else, and then when it comes to the finals, don't lose the game. And that's that's how people see, like, business, but you don't understand. Like, with footy, people only see the 80 minutes, but they don't see from November to December, December to February. Like, you see parts of it, you can understand, like, oh, it's hard work, but it's not, unless you're in these situations, um, you can you can really understand how much work actually goes goes into it. And the last thing is, I think, because entrepreneurs like the sort of a cool thing to be right now. So everyone sort of wants to be an entrepreneur, but you got to realize if you start your own business and you're the main guy, you've got no one you can blame. And you'll you'll find this we versus me thing. So when things are going well, like ATR, it's we like oh, we're making sales, we're going good. But as soon as shit hits the fan, it's the boys are going. What'd you do that for? Oh, why'd you make that design? Oh, I told you that should have been longer. You want to be the main guy in your business at the top of your business, you got to be putting out these fires as well. Trying to keep everybody happy or just putting out fires, putting out fires. And by the time you get to 11.30 at night, oh, and you're like, oh, all my posting's done. I've replied to everyone that I can. I've put out a vlog. I've tried to comment to everyone. 11.30, 12, you're asleep. By the time you wake up 6.37 in the morning again, there's six hours of potential problems that could pop up or new orders or new designs coming through so it's it's a massive balance balancing act and you just got to get your head around that and it won't be like that at the start but as you start to grow it start to grow a lot of pressure comes on top of you and it just builds 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 you got to put that out put that out pay that person um, organize designs get to 12 o'clock go to sleep reload and go again so I uh, hopefully this doesn't put you off from pursuing a passion if your passion is closed if you want to be your own boss, I don't think, if you generally want to be your own boss or you generally want to be an entrepreneur, um, this way, this vlog won't scare you, it'll actually excite you. And I generally mean that. And the ones that are being scared off from this, from late nights, from working hard, um, maybe the same for you. For this life I cannot change, in the hills, keep off in the